Hi friends. Okay, we are starting a new story in language arts called Jellies, the Life of Jellyfish. And so I know most of you don't have your books in front of you today and that's perfectly fine. You can just watch the video. But if you do have your book in front of you and you want to watch it or follow along while you're watching this video, the story will start on pages 336 and 337 in our book. Otherwise, you can just follow along with me as we go through this story. Now, this story is written by Twig C. George. So let's talk about our author, Twig C. George, here. And it says, Twig C. George's love for nature began when she was growing up around her mom, writer Jean Craighead George. So her mom was a writer, too. The George household had many unusual pets, including tarantulas, seagulls, crows, and a screech owl that liked to take showers. Twig George raises her own children around nature, too. Now, you'll notice that there's only an author for this story, so I bet you can guess right away before I even go over it what kind of story this is. When there's only an author and I see some real photographs, I bet you can guess. Yep, you got it. It is an informational text. We have read a lot of this kind of story so far this year, so here's another one that we're going to read. And we already know that this kind of story gives us facts about a topic. So in this case, we're going to learn facts about jellyfish. And so we are going to see details, facts, things that are true, plus we're going to see some real photographs because remember the author wants us to see those real things. And in this case, especially because they're jellyfish, a lot of these jellyfish, unless you were to go to an aquarium, you probably would never really see them in real life. Now, there's something in this story, too, that we have called captions. And captions are words that go along with the pictures a little bit, and we have talked about those just a little bit in some of our other stories, but I'll make sure to point them out as we go through this story today. Now, the essential question that we're thinking about with this story is, what is special about animals that live in the ocean? Because there are some different things about animals that live in the ocean compared to animals that live in regular water. So we can talk about that as we go through the story for the next few days. So right now, without further ado, let's read Jelly's The Life of Jellyfish. If you were a jellyfish, you would have two choices, to go up or to go down. That's it. Two. You would not have a brain, so you could not decide what to have for breakfast or where to go for lunch. The ocean currents would carry you along from place to place. In this way, you could travel hundreds of miles. Food might pass by you and get caught in your tentacles, or not. Now here's an example of a caption. This caption tells you that this is a mangrove jellyfish in this picture. And this one is an unnamed jellyfish, so they haven't given that knit jellyfish a name yet. All right, on to the next page. Sea turtles, dolphins, and whale sharks would try to eat you. You wouldn't worry about it because you couldn't. You would just float on. And here we have a rhizostone jellyfish. You would protect yourself with millions of tiny mechanical cells that, when touched by another animal, release a chemical and sting, like a bow and arrow. You would not know if you were stinging a friend or an enemy. You would not even know what a friend or an enemy was. This is a picture of a comb jellyfish. Jellyfish sting for protection and to catch food. That's all. They don't hunt and they can't chase. They just bump and sting, bump and sting. This is a picture of little fish swimming in and out of the dome of a moon jellyfish. Some jellyfish sting gently. Some jellyfish have a sting so powerful that they are more dangerous than a cobra. That's a type of snake, by the way. These are the Australian box jellies. This is an example of an Australian box jelly. It has a sting so powerful that it's worse than a snake bites poison. Jellyfish are so simple that they look like plastic trash floating in the sea. When an animal eats a jellyfish, it stays healthy and strong. When an animal eats plastic, it gets weaker and weaker and eventually dies. These are thimble jellyfish. Some jellyfish lie on the shallow bottom in clear, warm seas and grow their own food. 
These are called upside down jellyfish. Once they have eaten small bits of algae, just once, they can grow more inside their bodies by sitting in the sun. They are their own greenhouses and grocery stores all wrapped up in one. Here's some upside down jellyfish right here. To be a jellyfish, you need to be shaped like a bell with at least one mouth and tentacles. Many animals called jellyfish are really something else. The Portuguese man of war is not a real jellyfish. It has an air-filled bubble instead of a water-filled bell. This is the Portuguese man of war. Jellyfish are almost all water and a little protein. They look slimy and disgusting when they wash up on the beach. This is an example of a moon jellyfish. In the sea, jellyfish are beautiful. There are jellyfish as big as basketballs with long red tentacles called West Coast Sea Nettles. Here's a West Coast Sea Nettle. There are tiny, elegant jellyfish that look like a blizzard of snowflakes. Now, I'm not a very good pronouncer of Latin here, but I believe that we call these jellyfish Oicopleura labradorensis. That's what those little tiny jellyfish are called. There are jellyfish that grow so big that they are as long as a blue whale. They are called Arctic lion's mane jellyfish. They pulse and drift. They eat and reproduce. They live and die, all without a brain or a heart. This is the Arctic lion's mane jellyfish. Someday, you might be very lucky and see an ocean full of jellyfish. And since you have a brain and a heart, you would know you were seeing something unforgettable. This is a diver in a picture of golden mastigius jellyfish. And that is the end of our story. So thank you, friends, for listening. If you want to go back and listen to this again, great. Otherwise, we're going to read through this story quite a few times during the week. And I will talk to you again soon. Bye!